planets are orbiting around the sun. And making that extrapolation is really non-trivial. We take it for granted now, but realizing that something which we're experiencing right here, uh, Liberty Island. Yes. Yeah, yeah it yeah. was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. It never gets old <laughs> no, when you no, see that. No, you look no, down. No, it was really nice. I was on the right side of the plane. Well, I was on the left side of the plane, mm. which was the right side of the plane. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You look down and it's, I always think about it because we have the wallpaper here too, but it's obviously yeah. not nearly as good as yeah. the sky. It's yeah. like, damn, we built all those things. It's, it was crazy. Looking at it, you say, wow, there's so many of them. But yeah, yeah it was good. Now, in your world, does that exist or is space time not real? Well, <laughs> we can use it up to some extent if we really have to. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to yeah. get into it today because you're like one of those, pff, like my brain explodes no, you when see. I hear you talk. It's going to be fun. Yeah, you're like yeah. so you're so happy and fun about physics too, and yet you're looking at like the entire nature of reality. I don't yeah, know how yeah. you guys like sleep at night with that. Well, we get so tired thinking about all those things. And <laughs> <laughs> we have no other choice. <laughs> but I dream about it. You dream so, about yeah, it? Yeah, I dream about it. And sometimes uh, I start saying formula, G mu nu, T mu nu. <laughs> oh, you're dreaming about the formulas, not well, like the fun stuff. I mean, it's all built in. It's all, you think about, it's like Legos, right? You're thinking about the structure and then the formula, you have to think of them as the little pieces you put together. Mm. So sometimes it's like you have this little piece and you're trying to understand where you're going to put it. So mm. if that frustrates me. <laughs> and it comes to you in your dreams. <laughs> That's <what> sometimes <laughs> in my dreams, it's always, always very clear. It's just when I wake up, it's not that clear anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an idea. It kind of like goes yeah. away and you're like, wait, that was yeah. so good. What I'm was sure, that? I'm sure. I'm sure. Let me go back to sleep. I'm sure it's going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I actually, I got introduced to you through my friend Kurt Jamungle. He yeah. was here yeah. last summer. Yeah. We did a really fun conversation yeah. on here. And I think we talked about you, I think, on camera, but then we're talking about you off camera. And I can't even remember the context of it, but... He was talking about like how brilliant you were. And so I went and listened to the podcast you did with him. Yeah, we did a great podcast. Like, it was fun. I think it was yeah. shortly after yeah. that. And I was just like, well, I don't understand half of this. So we're going to have to do this in this <laughs> studio and bring it down to okay. earth for me. Okay. No okay. pun intended. Yeah. So he's a bit more technical. Huh? He's very yeah. technical. Yeah. yeah. Kurt's smart. Yeah. He's great. Yes. He's amazing. So yes. I, did, I did another podcast with him two weeks ago. Oh, you did? Uh, yeah. I yeah, didn't yeah, see yeah. that. Uh, it just came out. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to have to check that out too. Yeah. Kurt's extremely, extremely well read yeah, on yeah, all this no, no. stuff. He's, uh, he's uh, up there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good endorsement, by the way. He should play that like for his, uh, for his reel, like Claudia Duran. He's up there. <laughs> but your work, your life's work has been centered on gravity. That's right. And the nature of what it is. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of us out there, you know, know the story about Isaac Newton and the apple falling yeah, and that's yeah, gravity. Yeah, yeah, but we yeah. just think about it and, and take it for granted. It's the thing that keeps us on the ground. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so you, that's right. You're that's looking right. at it beyond that though, right? Yeah. I mean, one thing already with, uh, we can get stuck getting technical there, but one thing already with this story with Newton, it's not so much about the apple falling on him and hurting him. And that's really funny, mm. but it's him realizing that there's a phenomenon here on earth where we... It keeps us on the ground, it keeps us rooted, it keeps us there. But that's the same phenomenon and then dictates the laws of physics in the solar system. That's the same reason mm. planets are orbiting around the sun. And making that extrapolation is really non-trivial. We take it for granted now. But realizing that something which we're experiencing right here on, um, on a particular scale is in fact exactly the same phenomenon that governs the the formation of the whole of the universe that in itself is an incredible realization so the full universe and not just particularly like the galaxy that we exist in so now we can we can go into the details but in fact the whole universe is what is it it's, it's space time and so gravity is space time um, so it is the whole universe. Gravity is really the fundamental law that governs anything that you that you want to think mm. about um, but for Newton he was already understanding that, just pragmatically understanding an apple falling towards the surface of the Earth, that's the same phenomenon as a planet orbiting the sun. And the planet is falling. It is falling. It is attracted by the, by the sun. And we have the impression that it's not falling directly towards the sun, but it's still feeling the gravitational attraction of the sun. It's just imagine um, I take a rock or let mm -hmm. me take an apple. 
And instead of just dropping it, I were to throw it, and I'm not gonna throw it very, <laughs> very yeah. fast. So it's not gonna it's gonna drop in a little bit. And if I were to drop to to throw it faster and faster, yes. then it will start going further and further to the point that if I was strong enough, I could throw it, and it would the way it would fall, it would follow the curvature of the Earth. And so that's what being in orbit means. Oh. And so. Uh, the team that just went on orbit, <laughs> that just just went into space for six minutes. Oh, like minutes. Katy Perry and yeah. all that. Yeah, <laughs> that's what happens. That's why they did. They, in fact, they're not they're not experiencing something away from gravity. They're experiencing gravity. They're just falling. That's what that's what falling is. That's it, falling. That's, that's how, falling. That's what you so, call it. so if you're thinking of an apple falling, or if you think think of yourself falling, just during the fall itself, you're not going to feel anything. Mm. And and that's the same thing if you're in orbit. If you're in outer space and you imagine you're orbiting the Earth, that's what falling feels like. It's just that fall doesn't stop. You keep on going and going and going, and that's just amazing. It that's is. The and it's what thing you can imagine. It's what keeps us alive, too, because we're not uh, falling actually into the sun. That, that's, what, <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> when did you first get interested in gravity? Like, were you just a little girl? Like, I wonder why I'm... Standing on the ground right here and not floating. Well, I wasn't really too bothered about the Earth itself. I was more thinking about mm. the stars and and the planets. So it was more trying to understand what's our place, what's the place of the Earth here in in the solar system in in the universe. But I was very small. Yeah, but I think I think we all. I think we're all interested in gravity. Yeah. I think I think you can. <laughs> I can see you're, you're interested like that in gravity. Today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we all play with gravity to start with. We all throw things around. Mm -hmm. We all try to see if it's going to keep on falling down, keep on breaking down when it reach the ground. Um, and I think so we all do that and, and just continue doing it rather mm. than doing anything else. We all do it. But what makes you question how it works? I think it's playing with it. I think I think we, in fact, we we all sort of question it, and and after a while, we take it for granted. Was I guess I never, I never stopped taking it for granted. I never, I never ever stopped questioning it. Um, but I think we all sort of question it to start with. We all take objects and then make them fall down and say, "Oh, it's working. Let me try yeah. if it works again." Um, and it's sort of surprising that it works so well all the time. <laughs> <laughs> How young were you when you started actually looking into the science behind it rather than just experimenting and being curious? Um, probably around 10, 12, something mm. like that. Um, but looking at the science behind it is more reading about it and, and understanding what it means. What, um, without You don't need the math so much. Um, you don't? And, well, to understand the concepts, you don't need the math. Then, then if you want to actually... Um, interrogate things and make predictions, then you start needing to have formula and need to be more precise. And mm. that I don't think I ever did before I was uh, a teenager when, like everybody else. I was going to say, that gets very complicated <laughs> too. I don't, I don't think like at 10, you got to be special yeah. at 10 to be doing something like that. But it's it's interesting because when you think about everything that we look at in the universe, it's all at its core, I mean, this is overgeneralizing, but at its core, so much of it is theoretical. It's like, it's not like we were there at the Big Bang. It's not like we know yeah. precisely yeah. other than what we can estimate how old the universe is or how big it is, how many galaxies there are or anything. And the beauty of science is that the most brilliant people in the world right now, which you're among, years from now, much of your work will technically be proven like either wrong or it was on the right direction and now we've expanded yeah, upon it. But yeah, you're a yeah. part of that never-ending search for truth such that you can, you know, you look at legends like Einstein where his work, things have been proven wrong, but he set the pathway for that's so many why, people after him yeah, to improve. That's right. That's why It's exactly as you say. It's really a pathway and it's a journey. Yeah. And it's being part of the journey. And maybe well, your contribution isn't quite right. It's certainly not the end of the story, but we we're trying to get somewhere and exactly where we're going. We don't know. We yeah. don't know. But we, we're we trying to understand, yeah. And it, of course, it's all theoretical. I, love, I, I haven't been in space. I don't know that uh, I haven't gone and measure things mm. in outer space, for instance. But we can have theories. It's theoretical, but we can make predictions. And from those predictions, we can say, this is what should happen. Now, I'm going to start looking here. And I'm going to make this very, very precise observation. And this is what I should be able to see. 
And that's why we see. And mm. people have detected gravitational waves. Can you imagine? People have said, okay, if this is right, what it means is going to have, I'm going to build <clears throat> some um, vacuum chambers underground, um, and then I'm going to have some mirrors, which are located four kilometers apart, um, and we're going to have two set up like this, one on one side of the U.S., the other one on the other side of the U.S., and we're just going to wait there, and every so often, they're going to shake around just a tiny little bit, and that's going to be a signal of our gravitational waves, which is coming from the merger of two black holes located millions <laughs> of light years away from here. And he's <laughs> please going to have some funding from that. And, and people build that, and that's why they observe. You know that when gravitational waves pass through mm -hmm. the Earth, they are stretching space between those mirrors in those cavities, which are four kilometers apart, by a distance which is smaller than the size of a proton. Mm. And that's something we measure. This, this is something we could predict, and we have measure. And the way the signal behaves is exactly as one would have anticipated. So it's so all theoretical. It's been theoretical for 100 years. And then you actually observe it exactly the way you predicted it. It's cool when you can actually test it. It's amazing. It's amazing. Right? Yeah. But yeah. there's yeah. also, and, and I don't want to, this conversation gets weird sometimes because it's almost like you discourage thinking about things and how things could be, but it gets difficult when, thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.